Hi, from Jerusalem is Mark Regev, spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister. Thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Regev. Let's first talk about the situation that's uh, unfolding at the moment with Egypt. You've called in the Egyptian ambassador. Uh, what did you have to say to him? How concerned are you? I, I think you understand it would not be proper for us to go into discreet diplomatic uh, conversations on the airwaves. What I can say is the following, and my Prime Minister has said so publicly twice in the last week, is that we believe that the Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty serves the interests of both countries. We remember a time when Israel and Egypt fought wars. Thousands of people on both sides of the frontier were killed in those wars. We don't want to turn the clock back. We want the peace to stay strong. We think that's an interest of all nations of the world who want to see peace in the Middle East. But uh, Sharaf is saying that the treaty is not sacred, so clearly he doesn't agree with you on this. How do you think both sides will overcome this disagreement, if I can call it that? I'd only like to say the following. I think peace is an interest to both sides. Once again, what is the alternative? To go back to the wars? We had a war in 1948, a war in 56, a war in 67, a war in 73. Do Israelis and Egyptians want to go back to that? I don't think so. We in Israel want the peace. We want to, the peace to flourish. And we hope that the Egyptian side shares our view with. They've said so publicly that they do. How's Israel feeling at the moment? You've got uh, the Egyptians turning against you. You've certainly seen a dramatic change in stance uh, from Turkey. And you've also had the uh, demonstrations outside your embassy in Jordan. Are you feeling as though you're under some sort of siege at the moment? Well, there's, there's no doubt that the Arab world is going through very, very significant, possibly historic changes. And that a system, a political system that was closed for decades is being opened up. And just as forces of freedom and democracy are coming forward, I think we're also seeing extremist elements that don't believe in democracy, don't believe in, in liberty, and also don't believe in peace with Israel. It's, they usually go hand in hand, unfortunately. And I think... I can only hope, uh, if we use the Egyptian example, that those, those protesters, that mob that was trying to burn down the Israeli embassy and attack our embassy staff, I can only hope that they don't represent 85 million Egyptians. Let's talk about the Palestinian bid for statehood. Israel is obviously very against that at the moment. Please explain to me how come Israel is still pushing for a two-state solution and is yet standing in the way of the Palestinians applying for statehood? Because the Palestinians made a commitment to us and to the world to solve all the outstanding issues in negotiations. Now we know there are issues that separate Israeli from Palestinians. We see things differently. But the only way to overcome those gaps is through negotiations, through direct talks. Yeah, but, but unfortunately we, we the Palestinian know that those leadership... negotiations are, are getting absolutely nowhere. I mean, Israel keeps changing well, no, the, more the, the, the benchmarks. It's, Israel it, it, continues to put up settlements breaking international law? It, on the contrary. We know those negotiations have not succeeded. And the question has to be asked, why have they not succeeded? I mean, you've had successes Israeli governments who've put far-reaching proposals on the table. Uh, the Barak government talked about giving back uh, over 90% of the West Bank. Olmert, three years ago, talked about 67 borders with swaps and dividing Jerusalem. And nevertheless, the Palestinians said no. And I would ask you, is it really fair to point the finger at Israel and say we are the guilty party for negotiations not succeeding? I think anyone who's followed the negotiations closely knows that the Palestinians at historic moments said well, no well, to peace. Well, it seems and that the Palestinians have made all the compromises and Israel, as I said, keeps changing the, benchmark, the benchmarks. Now, Netanyahu has also said that he, he doesn't mind upgrading the PA status, but just not to statehood. What, uh, what is he talking about there? Can I, can I disagree with what you said, if you'll allow me, please? Israel is proposing today the immediate starting of direct direct peace talks at the highest level. My Prime Minister, the Palestinian President, all the core issues of the conflict can be on the table. Settlements, Jerusalem, borders, security, legitimacy, refugees. The Palestinians can bring all their concerns to the table and we will bring ours. And we want ongoing talks until finding an agreement. Now, from uh, the United but, Nations, sorry, if I the could just jump in there, every time you come up with some sort of agreement with the Palestinians, we see a whole lot of settlements springing up, which, again, 
goes against international law and is a statement that Israel is not taking any of the agreements seriously. I strongly disagree. In fact, I think you should give my current Israeli government credit. We've shown more restraint on the issue of settlements than any previous Israeli government. We introduced, not a previous government, we introduced, Prime Minister Netanyahu, a 10-month settlement moratorium, which the Americans called uh, unprecedented. And, and I think we should be given uh, credit for showing restraint on this, on this issue. But let's, okay, I would so, ask okay, the Palestinians okay, right, the following push, question. Okay, let me just ask you, what, what is Israel's response likely to be? I mean, it looks like, uh, regardless of what you say, what the US says or the EU, Palestine is going to go to the UN on Monday, hand over their bid and ask for statehood. What is Israel's response going to be? Well, from our perspective, the Palestinians are violating signed commitments. I mean, they committed themselves to solving all the issues of contention through negotiations. And so by deliberately boycotting Israel, by, by avoiding negotiations for two years now, and by going around the negotiations trying to get the UN to do it, they are violating our agreements. And of course, Israel reserves the right to respond in kind. If you break an agreement, you can't expect the other side to say business as usual. So how will you respond in kind? That, that we will see exactly what happens at the United Nations. We right. still hope it's possible to avoid uh, this at the United Nations. We still hope it's possible to restart the peace talks. And I would ask the Palestinians, how do you expect to have statehood and peace if you refuse to talk to Israel? You can get a piece of paper from the United Nations, but you can't get a state. You can only get a state through dialogue with Israel, through peace with Israel. Come, negotiate, let's overcome the gaps, let's overcome the historical divisions, let, let's bridge the gaps, let's make a historic Israeli-Palestinian peace treaty. The answer is in Jerusalem and in Ramallah. The answer is not in New York. Okay, Mark Regev, good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. My Tens of thousands of protesters are gathering in Yemen to demand the removal of President Ali Abdullah Saleh. These are some of the